Do you remember Reed Hoffman? I was planning on being the director of the CIA. Yes, you heard that right. Reed wanted, briefly, to be the director of the CIA. But hear him out. In my kind of 13-year-old mind, there was obviously a ton of suffering in the world, and I was trying to figure out how one would solve that. How would he solve the world's problems? By teaming up with his smartest friends and forming an alliance of superheroes, of course. I said, well, if we all kind of formed a pact and each of us would go for a different leadership position, you know, someone's going to be president, someone's going to be, this is back then, CEO of IBM. And if we all went to these different positions, then we could collaborate and we could then make the world a better place. By having high trust and and being in all these different leadership positions, we could impose a different structure. Hoffman is the billionaire founder of LinkedIn. LinkedIn seemingly founded off of his dream of building a cabal to take over the world. Notice, too, that Reed didn't imagine himself as leader of this cabal. His hero's role was the initiator and connector. 13-year-old Reed soon realized that becoming a super spy chief wasn't exactly for him. But he didn't give up on his belief in building networks of like-minded people who could transform society. Hoffman also became a member of the board of Microsoft right around the time that Bill Gates left. Hoffman is also the guy who introduced Jeffrey Epstein to Elon Musk and Peter Thiel at a dinner where he also brought Joy Ito, the man who resigned over covering up the Bill Gates funding of Jeffrey Epstein's MIT genetic engineering lab. Reed Hoffman also presented Jeffrey Epstein with the Palantir-like Disobedience Award Prize, and more info on that can be found specifically in my Disobedience Award video, as well as in the Final Revolution series. But more recently, Hoffman has begun working with George Soros to create an anti-disinformation media venture, as they call it. And for some insight on what this anti-disinformation venture might do, uh, we'll look at first at some of uh, Hoffman's past political actions, and then we'll look at the plans of the company. So as per Washington Post reporting, in 2018, Hoffman apologized for funding a group tied to disinformation in the Alabama race of Roy Moore. Hoffman's statement is his first acknowledgement of his ties to a campaign that adopted tactics similar to those deployed by Russian operatives during the 2016 presidential election. In Alabama, the Hoffman-funded group allegedly used Facebook and Twitter to undermine support for Republican Roy Moore and boost Democrat Doug Jones, who narrowly won the race. The Alabama effort was one of a series of multi-million dollar expenditures that Hoffman made to dozens of left-leaning groups in the aftermath of the 2016 election, when he offered himself to reeling Democrats as a source of money, connections, and Silicon Valley-style disruptions to the staid world of party politics. The head of the company leading the campaign, American Engagement Technologies, former Obama administration official and Google engineer, Mickey Dickerson, has not responded to numerous requests for comment. Hoffman's public apology follows... News reports on the effort known as Project Birmingham, which involved the creation of misleading Facebook pages to persuade Alabama conservatives to vote for somebody other than Roy Moore. One Project Birmingham tactic described in the document claimed backers had created false online evidence that a network of Russian automated accounts called bots were supporting Moore. In his statement, Hoffman called this effort the most disturbing aspect of the disinformation effort. This and some other key details were first reported in the New York Times. So that that part of the Russian bot story could be its own video. So we'll just skip over to the Axios reporting on uh, George Soros and Reid Hoffman's anti-disinformation venture. Good information aims to fund and scale businesses that cut through echo chambers with fact-based information. As part of its mission, it plans to invest in local news companies. That's something we've been seeing a lot of, uh, for example, with Trudeau, is just buying the local news companies from the ground up. And the group will be led by Tara McGowan, a former 
Democratic strategist who previously ran with a progressive nonprofit called Acronym. Acronym invested in for profit companies that built media and technology solutions for progressive causes. Really neutral, right? Democrat uh, operative uh, progressive causes. They're definitely going to fact check in a fair and balanced manner. Totally unbiased. Acronym ran one of the largest digital campaigns to defeat President Trump in a 2020 election, totaling $100 million. One of the companies it invested in, called Shadow, made headlines last year for contributing to the delayed reporting of the Iowa caucus results. I actually don't know much about that story. I'm sure that's uh, a tale of its own. Hoffman, the founder of LinkedIn, backed acronym. Acronym faced a Federal Elections Commission's complaint last year that alleged it wasn't transparent enough about Courier's backing. McGowan originally told Axios that the complaint had been dropped. The group that filed the complaint, Americans for Public Trust, told Axios that the complaint was still pending. McGowan subsequently told Axios that her lawyers are confident it will be dropped. So, uh, you know, the the, um, anti-misinformation venture here, just putting out a little bit of misinformation. Good Information Inc. will invest in new businesses and solutions that tackle the disinformation crisis. This could mean funding new or existing companies that boost news from existing news outlets. So let's hop over here to Good Information Inc.'s website. America is in an information crisis. Disinformation is threatening public health, safety, social trust, and democracy. 96 million Americans believe the 2020 election was stolen. 89 million Americans believe voter fraud is a major problem. 264 million Americans can't name their state legislators. 109 million Americans can't name their governor. 185 million Americans don't trust traditional media. Our public health, democracy, and trust in one another depend on good information. The need for new solutions to this information crisis is urgent. Good Information Inc. is a civic incubator that invests in new business models and smart solutions to counter disinformation where it spreads by increasing the flow of good information online. Facts, trust, democracy, all with the socialist fists, or at least variations of. Anytime I see those hands, my alarm goes off. Good Information Inc. will invest in and partner with media companies and platforms that center the communities they serve, their interests and their media consumption habits in their reporting and their content distribution strategies. We believe there is an urgent need for regulation of social media platforms. There we see uh, right there, that's key to whatever agenda is going on here, regulation of social media platforms. That right there is the end of free speech on the internet. It's also clearly a violation of the First Amendment, as well as increased investment in new models that place a higher value on serving community's truth. Community's truth. It doesn't even belong to the community. I don't know what community's truth is, but uh, essentially groupthink, I think. Uh, Whatever a community believes in, that's the truth, not the actual truth. In serving communities truth over clickbait and protecting democracy over profits, which is why they're investing in for-profit media ventures. Going back to Axios, which is actually an article that was linked on Good Information's media page. In February, Recode reported on leaked material suggesting the group would include a non-profit arm. McGowan told Axios there's no plan to launch a non-profit. Here you can see their portfolio or uh, people they're involved in. Courier Newsroom, which is a collection of local news agencies. The Keystone, the Gander, the Copper Courier, Cardinal and Pine, Dogwood, Floricua, 
Up North News, iOS Starting Line, and FWIW. I'm pretty sure those are all just local news agencies that are being funded by George Soros and billionaire liberal backer Reid Hoffman. And good information is a lifeblood of democracy. Reid had pondered a life in academia, but he yearned for a practical impact on society that academic journals couldn't deliver. So he looked around him in Silicon Valley, and he started to think, maybe he could spread his ideas through software. I said, well, what if you looked at software as a medium? Software is the medium by which we organize our thinking, by which we organize our thoughts, by which we find other people, by which we communicate. It was a different way of wielding influence. As opposed to writing essays, you're writing software. Reed started looking for the kind of software that could have the greatest impact on individuals and on society as a whole. What I was looking for was a change, an inflection point in the human ecosystem. And that was the kind of software that I was looking to participate in, to make happen. Reed now had a movie playing in his head. In it, he would create software that both connected people and fundamentally changed them for the better. His path to herodom lay in creating that software. 